Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and this video is going to be about breeding, uh, breeding of animals or plants. So here is the problem. Uh, I got a message today. I'm trying to make a program to calculate some dog in breeding. How would you calculate a relationship for father-daughter breeding? So first of all, uh, what animals we would call uh, that is in breed and which is not in breed. Imagine that uh, dogs and many plants are deployed. That means that they have two uh, chromosomes that is not necessarily identical. We call them homologous because, uh, for example, on one chromosome uh, that is from the father side, we may have alleles uh, like follows. Capital A, uh, small b, capital C, and uh, small d and on the other chromosome that is from the mother side we may have small a here capital b here uh, capital c here and, and capital d here so as you see we have two homologous chromosome for example this can be a chromosome number one but uh, alleles in the same uh, loci would be different. So uh, we can say that uh, this animal is not in breed. And now consider different situation. The same two chromosomes. And this time we have allele capital A here, small b here, small c here and small d here. And on the other homologous chromosome we also would have capital A allele here, small b allele here, small c here and small d here. In this uh, simplified um, situation, simplified version of the genome, we would see that all the loci have the same alleles. So we can say that uh, this animal is 100% uh, in breed. We also uh, call such animals pure line. That means that uh, such animal uh, would be identical with its uh, parents and progeny. Why we are interested in such animals or plants? Actually, we can find more in breed uh, pure line plants than pure line uh, animals that is 100% in breed due to inbreeding depression. And plants tolerate inbreeding uh, depression much better than animals. Only few animals are known that is 100% in breed. Uh, usually this is laboratory animals like um, mice for example or rats. And uh, in plants we can see such uh, inbreeding is much often. For example uh, why uh, farmers may be interested in such um, plants because everything nowadays is mechanized and uh, farmers would be interested that all the plants would uh, produce uniform fruits uh, of the same uh, for example shape, color and uh, other characteristics and they would uh, ripe at the same time. So this would be much easier to collect them using machinery. So let's return now to our problem here. So we have to find uh, uh, what is the inbreeding of the dog for. As you see, we have dog one here that is not related to the dog two. So let's use different colors for them. Let's circle this dog with uh, white color and dog number two with blue color. And as you know, the progeny, dog number three, uh, gender here is not specified because this is not important. This can be uh, whether male or female. This is not important for our calculations. What we know is that uh, this dog would inherit 50% of the genes from dog number one, its parent, and 50% of the genes from the dog number two. So we can use our color here to show how much uh, 
genes and alleles would be inherited from the dog number one and blue color to show how much uh, genes and alleles would be inherited from the dog number two. So as you see, 50% of the genes inherited from the dog number one and another 50% of the genes inherited from the dog number two. So in this generation, we see that daughter of the, oh, it can be son. So let's say that this is a daughter of the dog number two made with its own parent, for example, father. So let's put blue color here. And what would be inbreeding of the progeny? Once again, 50% of the genes would be inherited from the dog number three. So we can use uh, this line to show 50%. Of course, not this 50% would be inherited or not this 50%, but this would be mixture of the genes from the parents uh, of the dog number three. So once again, dog number four would inherit 50% of its genes from uh, parent uh, dog number two and 50% of the genes from the parent that is dog number three. And as you see, this dog would have 75% of the same genes as dog number two and 25% of the genes from the parent dog number three. So we can say that uh, here, uh, this dog would have 70 5% of the alleles that would be in homozygous state. And this is not necessary to be homozygous dominant. It can be homozygous recessive. For example, could be capital A, capital A alleles or small a, small a. And 75% uh, of the uh, loci of the dog number four would be in homozygous state. So alleles would be the same, two identical alleles. And about 25% would be different. So we can say that uh, inbreeding of this dog would be 75%. And now let's take a look what would happen if we proceed uh, inbreeding. And we call such inbreeding back cross inbreeding because we use the same dog, dog number two in each mate. So um, once again, dog number two here, we use blue color. And uh, if we cross with uh, its uh, granddaughter, so this is going to be grandfather uh, of this dog, so once again, dog number five would inherit 50% of its genes from the dog number two and another 50% from uh, another parent dog number four. And dog number four has 75% of its genes that is identical to dog number two and only 25% that is different. So 75% of 50% would be inherited uh, the same as uh, we see in dog number two, the same genes and alleles, and quarter of the 50% uh, would be inherited that would be different. What that means, that means that we reduced in this generation heterozygosity by half. So if uh, in the previous generation heterozygosity uh, so I put capital A and small a here, were 25% in uh, this new generation. Heterozygosity of the dog number 5 would be reduced by half, so going to be 12.5%. And homozygosity would be increased by 12.5%. So homozygosity would be 87.5%. Percent, And uh, once again, if we would mate this dog number five with dog number two, once again, 
if we perform back cross um, heterozygosity of the dog number 6 would be reduced by half. So heterozygosity of the dog number 6 would be 6.25% and uh, once again we have to add 6.25% uh, to alleles, percentage of alleles that is going to be in um, homozygous state where the homozygous dominant or uh, would be homozygous recessive. So our answer here would be 93.75%. So we can say that dog number 6 would be inbred by uh, almost 94% and only about 6% of its uh, alleles would be in heterozygous state. So as you see it is very easy to calculate the loss of the heterozygosity would be 50% in each generation and homozygosity of the loci would increase by half with each generation. So uh, as you see with back cross we need only one, two, three, four matings to reach a state in the progeny that is going to be um, over 93% homozygous in all loci and about 6.25 loci would be heterozygous. So uh, any situation when we have over 90% of the homozygosity in loci we call such animals highly inbreed. We may also call them pure line because uh, as you see progeny would highly resemble its parents and this is what is uh, of the higher value in dog breeding when progeny variation would be very small would be highly predictable and uh, all the characteristics of the dogs or any other animals would be stable generation to generation and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video Please write your comments, questions if you have any and see you in the next video. Goodbye.